And welcome back to Hannity. Now, President Obama sat down with his number one cheerleader and fan last night, Chris Matthews. You know, the man that gets a thrill up his leg and his entire body when he hears the president speak. And although Matthews' show is called Hardball, we decided to rename the show after last night's love fest. We're calling it T-Ball with Chris Matthews. And let's take a look at some of these, well, highlights. Well, let's play hardball. Let's do it. Uh, um, <laughs> you have a, a great audience here of, of college-age uh, people and some graduate students and faculty. Uh, there's some resistance out there among young people. We've seen it in the polls to, uh, to enrolling in the, in the exchanges and to get involved in taking responsibility for their health care. What's your argument why they should do that? The trust question, uh, the, the commitments you made before uh, the rollout with health care. Uh, what is it? What is it that's just, it's a serial decline, Mr. Yeah. President. It keeps going down. I know we had Watergate. We had the Vietnam War, of course, all that together. But what's going to stop and arrest that decline of faith in you doing the right thing, you being honest, I mean, anybody who's president, this uh, skepticism yeah. that's out there? Your remarks the other day on economic justice, to me as a Roman Catholic, was so resonant with what the Holy Father Francis right. has been saying. Talk about that common Judeo-Christian or even further Muslim background to uh, the belief we have a social responsibility, a moral responsibility to look out people who haven't made it in this country. I have to ask you a little f question you may not like to answer. Oh. This could be tough. All right. It's an essay question. Uh, okay. The qualities required of a president. Yeah. Vice President Joe Biden, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Compare and contrast. Uh, not a chance <laughs> am I going there. <laughs> All right, here with Reaction to the Love Fest, Fox News contributor Katie Pavlich, managing editor over at thinkprogress.org. They don't like me over there. Igor Volsky <laughs> is with us. Igor, how are you? Sean, we love you. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right. Um, Open arms. Let, let's be fair. I don't have a problem that Matthews worships, adores, has an Obamagasm at the sight of the guy. I don't have a problem with that part. I like making fun of it. Um, I don't have a Fair, he wants to do an interview. Here's the point. Even though it's going to be a, a friendly interview, how do you have an interview like this and not ask, Mr. President, what do you say to the millions of Americans that you promised could keep their plan and keep their doctor? And we're going to save $2,500 per family per year. What do you say to them that either lost their plan, lost their doctor, or are paying more? What, don't you think that had to be asked and it wasn't? Well, I, look, I think it's a question he's been asked before. It's a question he's nah, answered. Nah, nah, it's something Igor, he's stop. apologized for. Come on. That's, that's a mil what do you say to the millions of Americans that got cancellation letters? That's, that's well, basic. I think, I think to them, I think to them, I would say you were in a market where you were being canceled and dumped all the time. Now you're going to go into an insurance exchange, a private insurance exchange, where you're going to get subsidies for coverage and comprehensive insurance that's going to be there but you, but when Mr. you President, need it. Mr. President, you promised these people. You <laughs> made a promise, a pledge, a vow. They trusted you. Yeah. Look, what do you Sean, say I agree. Overly, overly broad political statements are dangerous to make in politics. Certainly, he knows that. He made a mistake. Made a mistake. Yeah, but he, yeah, he, look, and he the made American a mistake. American people made he a mistake. Have, they believe He shouldn't them. have said it. He shouldn't have said it. But I think at the end of the day, when you're going to have people signing up for insurance, uh, getting insurance that really works, that covers all their conditions, you're saying, they don't get worry, sick, it's going to be. I think those numbers are going to change around. You know, Katie, I don't know. I mean, Igor's trying to. It's a hard thing for a left person to answer. Why, why does it just get in my craw that those people <laughs> are suffering and a president lied to them? Well, and this is the thing, and on a serious note here, I think that the way Chris Matthews didn't ask that question, the way that the president hasn't been asked that question directly and how he hasn't directly come out and addressed uh, these families and these individuals who are losing their health insurance and aren't getting put into a better marketplace, I'm sorry, but they're not going to get better coverage. They can't sign up for uh, Obamacare through the exchanges, and they're seeing their premiums triple. For young women, it's going up 193%. That is not they're, better, they're coverage. better coverage. That is not, that is not ha please explain to me how they're getting better coverage they're not getting better coverage sure. they don't I'll have coverage five million people have lost their insurance but to my broader point is that Chris Matthews not asking the question and President Obama continually dodging it and people like you dodging the question shows that you don't appreciate no. and you don't you've never respected the fact that these people are losing their insurance and these are real people dealing with real Katie. problems who have lost their insurance coverage and they need help 
No, Katie, I respect the fact that people who lost their insurance are upset about it. I respect the fact that they heard their president say they can keep their coverage and now they can't. They're frustrated. I understand that and I think the president made an overly broad statement. I agree. But I think that at the end of the day, he lied. those same this was, people were This was were not in an overly broad Katie, statement. He, this was a lie. This was a lie. Well, it's a you statement tell, that you says... Let, it's let's a, walk through this one more time. We had President yeah. Obama for years saying, if you like your plan, you can keep it, period. You had Democrats yes. for years, and to this day, you had Harry Reid just this week saying, the president didn't lie. You have Nancy Pelosi saying, the president didn't lie. Look, People can still keep their plans or get them Katie. back. And then, again, further, in 2009, Democrats had the chance to vote for an amendment that would allow millions of people to keep their health care plans, and they voted against it. So don't tell me that President Obama misspoke when he lied Katie, about it. I didn't this say he misspoke. I said I didn't, said I didn't say he misspoke. You said it was an overly broad political statement. Let me, let me say this. At the end of the day, I don't care who you are, you can't make the promise that you can absolutely keep the coverage you have. You couldn't have made it before the law, and you can't make it now so why don't we because start the market over? is currently Igor. changing. Why don't we the start over? Is... Igor, hang on. Well, what, then, then, yeah. Wait a minute. So you're admitting he lied. All right. All right. Fair no, enough. No, on, on the fundamental promises of the way this law was sold, they, you see, they made a conscious decision. We now know back in July of 2010. So I think, to be fair, for the American people, if it's going to be one sixth of the economy, why don't we just start over? You don't want to start over no, because I do you, want to start already over. Have, you already oh, have millions of people who have coverage for the very first time. You have millions of people in Medicaid, <laughs> low-income Americans, who Five now have insurance. 100,000 people? 100,000 people? People, 100, people? people are signing up for this coverage every single day. You're not going to take this insurance away from them. They're signing okay. up in the exchanges. They're signing up on the state-based exchanges in Kentucky, let's, in let's California, break down the in Maryland, okay, let's in break New down York. The numbers. Let's break down the numbers that came out. We're talking about 100,000 people, 23,000 of which have signed up through the federal exchange. Compare that now to the, it's, amount of, the now number. It's that, a compare lot that, higher. Compare this. Okay, let's talk about numbers. Compare that to the number of people who have lost insurance, 5 million. Now further compare it to the number of people who are expected to lose insurance. 77 million people in this country are expected to lose their health insurance thanks to Obamacare. And you're going to tell me Katie, that because a couple know. people have Katie, signed I don't up know through what the exchange world that that's you a lived success? in before where people never lost their coverage ever. What world did you live in before? People lost their coverage in the individual market if they developed cancer. Hey, if Igor, they had the access, CBO they said, the says, now Igor, they're gonna have Igor, coverage. There, the CBO says that under Obamacare, 30 million Americans remain uninsured. Well, yes, those are the undocumented immigrants, and those are those 30 are million other Americans low-income Americans. 30 yes, million. those are... Sean, if okay. you 30. want to insure more people, and if your complaint is the law doesn't insure more, I'd be happy to work with you All right, to Katie, insure we'll give you those 30 word. million people. Absolutely. Katie. This is the point. Obamacare was sold on the, the idea to get 45 million uninsured people in this country insured. It was not sold on the idea that millions of people would have to lose their plan in order to insure the minority in this country. Let's focus on getting the people who need to be insured insured. Don't take it away from the rest of Americans because your program isn't working for them. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Thank you both. You know, if I lied, you guys over at Think Progress, you'd be attacking me now, wouldn't you, Igor? You'd be after me, right, Igor? Truth. Sean, we love truth at Think Progress. You'd like, well, then you should be attacking the president. <laughs> Listen, I agree. He shouldn't have made an overly I didn't broad see, statement. I have never Caveats seen you on your website needed. attacking the president. It wasn't a statement. You <laughs> attack me? I'll, I'll, Sean, I'll email right. you those posts. Tell John Podesta I say hi. we got to roll. Uh, coming up.